Updates in Anesthesiology. Brought to you by Nysora. Hello, Dr. Hadzik here. Welcome to another episode of Updates in Anesthesiology, where we bring you the latest evidence and breakthrough in the field, helping you integrate the key findings into your practice. Today, we're diving into the 2024 study led by Dr. Anahi Perlas, published in Anesthesiology, which tackles an essential question for every anesthesiologist. Are current preoperative fasting guidelines equally effective in diabetic patients as in healthy patients? We will explore the implications of this study, its potential to change how we manage diabetic patients preoperatively, and how gastric ultrasound has emerged as a game-changing tool for assessing aspiration risk. By the end of this episode, you'll have a clear understanding of how this knowledge can help reduce pulmonary aspiration risks and enhance patient safety in your practice. Let's talk about a key insight from the study. The use of gastric ultrasonography to assess stomach contents preoperatively has been advocated for over 30 years. However, its routine integration into clinical practice began to gain momentum around 2009, largely thanks to research conducted by Dr. Perlas and her team at the University of Toronto. Their work has shown the effectiveness of using ultrasound to identify whether patients have liquid or solid stomach contents before anesthesia administration. This method has evolved into a reliable way to assess aspiration risk especially in cases where traditional fasting protocols might not be sufficient. In the latest study published in the April 2024 issue of anesthesiology, Dr. Perlas and her team sought to determine whether diabetic patients who are at an increased risk of delayed gastric emptying due to conditions like gastroparesis have greater gastric volumes when following standard fasting guidelines. The preoperative fasting guidelines, as you may know, have been successful in healthy patients, reducing the fasting period from the traditional nothing-by-mouth-after-midnight rule without increasing the risk of perioperative pulmonary aspiration. But the question remains, do these guidelines work as effectively for diabetic patients? Methodology and Findings in this study, Dr. Perla's team conducted a cross-sectional non-inferiority trial that compared gastric volumes in fasting diabetic patients to those of healthy non-diabetic patients. All participants adhered to standard fasting guidelines, and crucially, the study population was limited to those with a BMI of less than 40. Their results showed that the mean fasting gastric volume in diabetic patients was not significantly higher than in non-diabetic patients. Furthermore, when looking at those who had more than 1.5 mg per kilogram of gastric fluid, a threshold that classifies the stomach as full and thus a high aspiration risk, the rates were similar. 15% of diabetic patients and 11 of non-diabetic patients had full stomachs. None of the patients, diabetic or not, had solid contents in their stomachs. So what does this mean for clinical practice? The findings of this study are reassuring. In a well-selected patient population with a BMI of less than 40, diabetic patients who follow current fasting guidelines appear to have a comparable risk of aspiration to their non-diabetic counterparts. This means that absent other complicating factors like gastroparesis, anesthesiologists can approach preoperative fasting management for diabetic patients with more confidence, knowing that the risk of pulmonary aspiration is not inherently higher. However, it's worth noting that this study focus was on patients with a BMI of less than 40 BMI, leaving an important question unanswered. What about diabetic patients with a BMI greater than 40? Given the rising prevalence of obesity, particularly among diabetic populations, future studies will need to address whether the same fasting guidelines are effective in higher BMI patients. Let's talk about the role of gastric ultrasound and risk assessment. This study is a part of a broader effort by the Perlas team to refine gastric ultrasound as a tool for bedside risk assessment. 
they have developed both qualitative and quantitative grading systems for determining whether a patient's stomach is empty, low volume, or full, based on whether there is more or less than 1.5 milliliter per kilogram of clear fluid or solid content in the stomach. For anesthesiologists learning to perform gastric ultrasound, it is becoming increasingly practical, particularly for high-risk populations, such as diabetics or patients on medications like GLP-1 receptor agonists, which are commonly prescribed for diabetes and weight loss, but are known to delay gastric emptying. The ability to directly assess stomach contents can provide critical information when fasting history is unclear or when managing patients on medications with unpredictable effects on gastric motility. Let's talk about the impact of the GLP-1 receptor agonists. Another emerging challenge in anesthesia practice is the ever more widespread use of GLP-1 receptor agonists such as semaglutide, for both diabetes management and weight loss. These medications delay gastric emptying, potentially increasing the risk of pulmonary aspiration. The effects are highly variable, however, making it difficult for anesthesiologists to rely on fasting guidelines alone for patients using these drugs. As Dr. Warner highlighted in his editorial accompanying this study, the American Society of Anesthesiologists ASA has issued pre-operative guidance for managing patients on GLP-1 agonists recommending that these medications be withheld on the day of surgery or for a week in patients on weekly dosing to mitigate the risk of delayed gastric emptying. However, if a patient exhibits symptoms of delayed gastric emptying, elective procedures should be postponed or gastric ultrasound should be employed to assess the risk of aspiration. So here's some practical takeaways for clinicians. Let's wrap up with some key actionable points from this episode. Number one, diabetic patients with a BMI of less than 40 kilograms per square meter following standard preoperative fasting guidelines have a comparable risk of aspiration to those of non-diabetic patients. Number two, Gastric ultrasound is a highly effective tool for assessing gastric content preoperatively and can help anesthesiologists make informed decisions, particularly in patients with uncertain fasting history or those at a higher risk, such as diabetics or patients on GLP-1 receptor agonists. Number three, the ASA guidance on the preoperative management of patients on GLP-1 agonists should be followed carefully withhold the medications on a day of surgery or for a week in those on weekly dosing and assess for symptoms of delayed gastric emptying. Number four, as the prevalence of obesity continues to rise, more studies are needed to assess whether current fasting guidelines are effective for patients with a BMI greater than 40, particularly in the diabetic population. Number five, Stay vigilant and consider using gastric ultrasound as a routine tool in the preoperative assessment of high-risk patients to reduce the risk of aspiration and improve patient safety. Thank you for tuning in to today's episodes of Updates in Anesthesiology. Stay informed with the latest research and best practices by following this podcast. And we'll see you next time with more insights to keep your practice at the forefront of patient care. Stay safe and stay ahead of the curve.